Potsdam is not what most travelers would expect from a Prussian city. It must be surrounded by more parklands, palaces, pavilions and lakes than any in Germany. It is fit for the rulers who shaped it that way, and presents rare insights into their characters. Potsdam's attraction lies in telling the story of everyone from kings and their architects to soldiers, immigrants, and spies. Potsdam's location is fortunate, amid vast green and wooded expanses where the river Havel is a chain of lakes. It was also strategic. But it is man-made landscapes that are the key, both to Potsdam's history and its appeal for visitors. It defies the militaristic image of Prussia, although vestiges of militarism can be found. Potsdam never had to be a Prussian capital like Königsberg or Berlin. But, more than either, it was the home of the Hohenzollern princes who created the most ambitious and vital of German states. In Potsdam these electors kings and emperors created worlds for their own pleasure, and found a place to lavish their energy, their vision, and the talents of their architects, builders and landscape designers, produced about 150 buildings and green expanses that earned UNESCO World Heritage listing in the 1990s. About 20 structures are palaces, large and small. The works include contributions from Prussia's greatest architect, Karl Friedrich Schinkel, and leading landscape genius, Peter Josef Lenné. Early in the 18th century the first Prussian king, Friedrich Wilhelm I, made Potsdam a garrison town and started work on a wall with town gates and a city canal. The king settled Dutch craftsmen in his town and enlarged it twice, putting an end to the medieval Potsdam. But Friedrich Wilhelm's son, Frederick the Great, saw in Potsdam possibilities for a royal residence in more intimate surroundings than he could hope to enjoy in Berlin. This changed the character of Potsdam, and today earns the gratitude of visitors.